What's up you guys it's Deep over here and today we will see how to create this awesome reflection of an object in Photoshop Now if you guys also have any tutorial request then you can drop them in the comments below We will surely try to create videos on those as well Also if you want to keep learning how to create such cool things in Photoshop for free then make sure you smash that subscribe button if you haven't already So without wasting any more time of yours Let's get started. So this is the image of the object which we will be using for this tutorial. Now if you want to follow along with me, then you already know the drill. Links in the description below. So the first step we need to do is get the selection of the object in the image. So for that we can get the selection using quick selection tool. or else we can use pen tool but for this tutorial i will go ahead with pen tool since we require a smooth and perfect selection so for that select pen tool and then you can click on the drop down over here and then select the option as path and then using the pen tool we need to create the path around the edges of the clock so let me just do that so for that let me just zoom in into the image so let's start from the bottom of the clock over here While creating the path, you need to make sure that you create a path which is little bit inside of the edges of the clock so you don't capture any white background. Now if you want to change the direction or the length of any of the handles, then all you need to do is press alt and then hover over that handle. So as you can see as you hover over that handle, the cursor of the mouse changes to a different kind of arrow and then you can drag that arrow as follows. So like this way you can change the direction or the length of any of the handles. So now once you have created the path for the outer edges of the clock, we need to create a similar path for the inner edges of the clock as well. But before that let's save this path which we have created so in case if we do something wrong then we won't have to start from scratch so for that go to this paths tab and then you just need to double click on that work path and then give a name of your choice and then you can click on okay so now as you can see now that work path has been renamed and that path has been saved over here as well so now let's start by creating the path for the inner edges of the clock as well But before that we need to do some settings. So for that click on the path operations icon. And then over there you need to select the option as exclude overlapping shapes. And then you can start creating the path. So now once you have completed your path, the icon of your path should look something like this. Now let's say that if you had selected a different path operations then your icon would have been different so let's say if you had selected a path operations as combined shapes then your icon would have been something like this so as you can see this path operation tries to combine both the paths over here which is not the case for us so let me just select our original path operations so now once you have created both the paths now we need to get the selection of this path So for that all you need to do is press control or command on Mac and then click on the icon of the path layer which will give you its selection. So now once you have got the selection of the object in the image then you need to go to the layers tab and then you need to click on add layer mask icon which will only keep the portion of the image which is inside of the selection and hide the rest of the image. So now as you can see now only the object in the image is visible and the rest of the image has been hidden. Now we need to convert this layer into a smart object so that later on we can edit it non destructively. So for that right click on the layer and then select the option as convert to smart object. So once you have converted your layer into a smart object the icon of your layer should look something like this. Now after that we need to fill the background with white color at the moment. So for that click on create new fill or adjustment layer icon. and then select the option as solid color and then select the color as white and then you can click on okay after that we need to drag this color fill layer at the bottom so let me just do that 
Now we need to convert this color fill layer as the background of the layers. So for that go to the layers tab and then new and then select the option as background from layer. So now as you can see now that color fill layer would have been converted into a background layer. Now the next thing we need to do is create a nice background for our clock image. So for that click on create new filler adjustment layer icon and then select the option as gradient. Now in the pop-up you need to click on the gradient icon which will give you a new pop-up in order to select the gradient. Now over here we will be creating a custom gradient. So for that select the gradient as black and white. And then we need to click on the leftmost bottom color stop. And then set the location of that color stop to around 5%. And then click on the color icon. And then set the color of that color stop to white. And then you can click on OK. Now we need to add one more color stop. So for that go at the bottom and one hand icon will appear over there. So you need to click over there in order to add a color stop. And then you need to set the location of that color stop to around 33%. And then click on the color icon. And then set the color of that color stop as follows. A1, C6, D7. And then you can click on OK. I'm setting the color of this color stop as a shade of a blue because the color of my object is blue over here. You can set the color according to the color of your object. After that we need to add one more color stop. So for that you need to click on it in order to add a color stop. And then you need to set the location of that color stop to around 72%. And then click on the color icon. And then set the color as white. And then you can click on OK. After that set the rightmost bottom color stop active by clicking on it. And then set the location of that color stop to around 98%. And then click on the color icon. And then set the color as follows. A6, C5, D7. And then you can click on OK. So once you are done adding all the four points, after that you need to make the second bottom color stop active by clicking on it. So as you can see as you click on that color stop, there will be some diamond kind of icons near of it. So you need to click on that right diamond icon. And then you need to set the location of the diamond icon to 8%. So after setting the location of the diamond icon to 8%, your gradient should look something like this. Now after that you can click on OK. And then you need to set the style as linear, angle as 90 degree, scale as 100%. And then make sure you untick this reverse checkbox. And then you can click on OK. And then after that let's reduce the opacity of this gradient layer to 75%. So let me just do that. So now as you can see now our background is ready. Now the next thing we need to do is scale down this object. So for that make the smart object layer active by clicking on it. And then we need to press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus T in order to bring up the transform tool. And then you can scale down this object as follows. So this much scaling looks proper. And then you can try to place this object at its location. So let me just do that. So I've increased the size of the object in the process. So once it looks proper, after that you can click on the stick icon in order to place it. Now the next thing we need to do is place this object at the horizontal centers of the document. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac and then click on this background layer which will give you the selection of the background layer as well as keep the selection of the smart object layer active and then select move tool and then click on align horizontal centers. So now once all those process have been done, now after that we need to start with the process of creating a reflection. So for that we need to create a duplicate of the smart object layer. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus J. And then we need to drag this duplicate layer below our original layer. So let me just do that. So once you have dragged the duplicate layer below our original layer, now after that we need to bring up the transform tool. So for that press Ctrl or Command on Mac plus T. And then we need to right click inside of the tool and then select the option as flip vertical. And then you need to drag this image below the edges of the bottom image. So for that press shift and then drag it as follows. By pressing shift you can drag the image in a straight line. So now the edges of the both the images should touch each other. So once it looks proper after that you can click on the stick icon in order to place it. After that we need to hide some portions of the reflected image over here. So for that we need to click on add layer mask icon. And then we need to select gradient tool. So for that right click on the three dot icon over here. And then select the option as gradient tool. And then you need to click on the gradient icon over here. And then select the option as black and white. And then you can click on ok. And then you need to make sure that you have selected the linear gradient icon. 
and then using the gradient tool you need to do the following so for that go at the bottom and then press shift and then click and drag above as follows and then you can release somewhere over here so as you can see as you release your mouse click it fills the mask of the reflected layer with that of the gradient which gives you this kind of effect now if you are not satisfied with the effect then you can repeat the same step again you can repeat this step until you are satisfied with your effect. So now for me this much reflection is looking proper. Now after that we need to add some blur onto this reflected layer. So for that we need to make the reflected layer active by clicking on it and not the mask of that reflected layer. So as you can see as you click on it it makes that reflected layer active and then go to filter and then blur and then select the option as box blur. And then we need to set the radius of this box blur filter to around 15 pixels. Now let me just show you the before and after of this box blur filter. So this was the before and now this is the after. After that you can click on OK. So now as you can see by adding this blur it gives such a nice realistic touch over here. Now after that we need to add some noise over there as well. So for that again go to filter and then noise and then select the option as add noise. Now over there you need to set the amount to around 14%. Distribution as uniform and then make sure you untick this monochromatic checkbox. Now let me just show you the before and after of this noise filter. So for that let me just zoom in a little bit into the image. So now this was the before and now this is the after. After that you can click on OK. Now let me just make this image fit into the document. So once you have added that noise filter. Now the next thing we need to do is reduce the filters which we have added near the edges of the reflected portion over here and then gradually increase as we go below. So for that we need to make the mask of the smart filter layer active by clicking on it. So as you can see as you click on it that square box shifts over here and then you need to select the gradient tool and then you need to click on the gradient icon and then select the gradient as black and white and then click on OK. Also select the gradient as linear. And then using the gradient tool you need to drag it from the top to bottom as follows. Press shift while dragging in order to drag it in a straight line. So now as you can see we have filled the mask of the smart filter with that of the gradient. Now after that let me just show you the before and after of the effect we just did. So for that let me just zoom into the image. So this was the before and now this is the after. So as you can see it gradually increases the filters which we have just added. Now let me just make this image fit into the document. So now as you can see now our reflection is looking so much better. Now the next thing we need to do is add some shadows from this original clock. So for that we need to create a new layer. So for that click on create new layer icon and then select brush tool and then click on the drop down over here and then select the brush as soft round and then you need to make sure that the opacity and the flow of the brush is set to 100%. And then click on the foreground color and then set the color as black which will be the color of our brush and then you can click on ok. After that using the brush tool you need to create the shadows as follows. You can increase and decrease the size of the brush using the square bracket keys of your keyboard. Now in order to create shadows you can click over here and then press shift and then click over here. By pressing shift it drags it in a straight line and then click on the other side. And then press shift and then again click over here. After that you can create some random shadows over here as well. So let me just do that. So once you're done by adding the shadows. Now after that you need to reduce the opacity of this shadow layer to around 75%. So as you can see after reducing the opacity to 75%. The shadows are still looking a bit too much. And we need to reduce it more. So for that click on add layer mask icon. And then using the same brush tool you need to hover over the areas where you want to reduce the shadows. So now as you can see now our shadows are also looking proper. So yeah that's it guys that's the final image. I hope you guys like this video on how to create this awesome reflection effect in photoshop. Now if you guys like this video then give us a thumbs up. It helps us in deciding what kinds of topic you want to watch more. Also you can share it to the ones who might be interested in such videos and subscribe to the channel for more videos in photoshop. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.